Welcome back to Finance in Motion. My name is Adamo, your personal financial planner. And as always, my goal is to help build your wealth and help you sleep well at night. Today's video is a topic that I really wanted to cover uh, considering what we're going through right now with COVID-19. So it's uh, something that I, I, I do share with clients individually, but I wanted to share it with the masses just to get some, uh, some notions out there and help everybody rest assured and, and, uh, and be um, at peace with uh, what's going on. So the goal and the issue that I, I wanted to raise is how do I help replace emotions with logic during market downturns or during corrections or eventual recessions. So this video is for anyone who has an RSP, who has a tax or savings account, who's invested in a pension plan, who's invested in a non-registered account. If you have investments, this video is most likely gonna touch you somehow, okay? So the key in this video of uh, psychology of investing is how do I make sure that I get rid of the emotions and I replace it with logic uh, as I go through this trying time, okay? So um, I put up some elements that I'm gonna go through rather quickly. Uh, you're gonna see, I'm gonna put up some slides to help visualize uh, some of these psychological elements that we need to replace uh, with logic. And you'll see that by the end of the video, uh, I'll have some actions and, and some results that'll uh, bring some, some of this to light. So the first element that I wanna talk about is, uh, these are all elements that are going on right now uh, you're either feeling them yourselves or if you look in the media or you're watching um, some of the reports on CNBC, Bloomberg, etc., you'll see some of these phenomena actually taking place. My job is to help explain them. Once we know what these are, we can recognize them once they're happening and help uh, push those away and replace those with logic. So the first one is the herding mentality. So on the first slide, uh, you'll see that it's a uh, it's a, the slide called cycle of the markets, okay? So you see that most people will follow the masses. So if you take a look at the curve that I outlined here, uh, the curve that goes up is as the markets get more and more expensive. So think of 2019, everybody was making money, they're happy. So you see the emotions that humans feel once it hits the top. So end of 2019, we all felt really happy about our money, doing well, that's the thrill and euphoric section. However, this is the point where the markets are at the riskiest, and therefore the highest chance of dropping due to some unknown uh, variables such as, in this case, a virus. So as markets go towards the, the, the lower end of the spectrum or there's a correction as, as the term may be, as we've been seeing in the last few weeks, look at the emotions humans have. Anxiety, denial, fear, panic, desperation. These are all words that you're most likely feeling right now as the prices come down. However, at the bottom, that's where we need to look at buying or adding positions to our portfolio. So if we continue to follow the emotions across the curve, if we buy high and sell low because of our human emotions, that will result in bankruptcy because we sell when the markets are low, therefore we actually have losses and then we'll buy when the markets are high. So if you continue to repeat that, buying high and selling low, that is not a recipe for success. Okay, so our job as planners is to make sure that we do the opposite of what your emotions are telling you. Example, when gas prices come down, we usually go fill up on gas. We don't put less gas, same thing in our investments, okay? So the second element is the power of staying invested. So if you look at the second slide, I wanna draw your attention to, um, essentially what this slide is, is the returns in the last 20 years uh, if you look at, on the right side, average investor, you'll see that the average investor earned 2.6% average annual rate of return in the last 20 years. So imagine you were sitting down with your advisor and your advisor showed you 2.6% annually over 20 years. You obviously would not be happy, okay? Uh, don't forget, we have to remove inflation. Now, why is this important? Look on the left, uh, you'll see the 60-40 portfolio, which is more or less a balanced portfolio, that in the last 20 years rate had a rate of return of 6.4%, okay? Why is that important? Well, 6.4 is obviously a lot better than 2.6. So what's the phenomenon taking place that the average investor has such a low rate of return? The answer is clear, it's emotions. It's trying to time the markets by right now, for example, selling because we're afraid and trying to go back in the markets when the markets rally or climb up again. So what we have to do is stay invested and not uh, use our emotions to make decisions for us by selling and buying and selling and buying. The longer we stay invested, 
the better returns we'll have and it, it's, it's seen in the last 20 years, okay? So don't be the investor on the right, be the ones on the left of, of that diagram. The third slide is known as uh, missing the best days, okay? So again, due to our emotions, we wanna sell and go back in the markets, go cash, go back in the markets, uh, when we think it's, it's the best time to do that. The problem is in the last 20 years, if we take a look at the slide, if the person who stayed fully invested in the last 20 years yielded 9.3%, okay? So this is uh, the TSX. But again, it doesn't matter which market it is, it's uh, look at the numbers by missing any days in the market. So if you missed none of the best days in the last 20 years, you would have yielded 9.3%. The number is not that important. It's the difference between the numbers that's very, very important. Look at now an investor who missed only the top five best days in the market in the last 20 years. It's relatively nothing. Look at it, 7.3. So you left on the table 2% just by missing the five best days. Now, take that to an extreme. If you miss the top 20 days in the last 20 years, so the best day per year, for example, in the last 20 years, 3.9%. So you can see that the power of staying invested and not being emotional and not selling, going to cash and coming back in the markets has a huge uh, impact on your portfolio returns over the long haul and therefore on your retirement. The last point, the last element that I wanna to touch on is don't lose twice. So look at the, a slide, don't lose twice. So it's a little bit complicated to look at, but the more you are the portfolio on the right, so the dotted lines, the more cash you have in your portfolio, okay? So the most extreme examples on the right that took 294 months and 358 months, those were portfolios that sold during a recession or during a crash where there was risk in the market like now and went all cash or all bonds. The problem with that is that it takes you so long to recover versus a portfolio, look towards the left, all the portfolios that had more stocks or were more balanced overall, they took a lot less months to recover from a crash or a correction. So the point of this slide is, number one, if the markets decline and you sell, you lose once because you actually took those losses. And number two, if you stay in cash too long, it'll take you way too long to make back the money you lost. So the idea is do not lose twice, stay invested in the markets, avoid the psychology and the emotions of investing and make sure that you stay invested so that when the markets rally and pop back up, you'll benefit from that rally rather quickly, okay? So those are the four major elements that I wanted to share uh, in terms of what's going on right now from a psychological fear-based perspective. And now that we understand these things, I'm gonna show you the actions that we need to, uh, to put in place to, uh, to do essentially the opposite of this. So let's take a look at the actions that we can take now that we understand the fear-based emotions how do we turn those into logic uh, and, and make sure that we can invest with that information in mind? So uh, look at the actions that I put up on the board. These are four major actions that I think if we put these in place, we'll be okay, we'll get through this tough time and we'll see greener pastures on the other side of it. So if you look at the first one is history. So the first slide that I wanna show you, if you take a look at it, it the point of history is that uh, we have seen this before. So the good news is that markets have seen this before. Look at, uh, the downturn from the, the past flus um, since essentially the 18, 1800s. So we have seen flus like this in the past. If we take a look at the most recent ones being um, the, the Asian flu and then avian flu, SARS, MERS, cholera, swine flu, you'll see that the trend is always that there's a bit of a decline, which looking back now, if you look at these drops, they don't look so deep because you're not feeling it daily. Right now we're in one of these declines in the market, so we're feeling it daily, right? But if you see that after the, the decline, so take for example, uh, SARS, okay, on, on the right side towards the top, you see that sharp decline, but then it pops back up until uh, swine flu hit, then it dropped again, and then it popped back up, and again, cholera, MERS, Zika, yes, short term had small impacts, but not enough to affect the world or the world economy. Therefore, there weren't big drops in the market and especially the US market. So the point is that if we look from the beginning of the line all the way to um, the far right, you see that there's ups and downs, but the trend overall is upward. So of course it feels uh, hurtful and tough and emotional right now because we're on the decline, 
but that if we follow the trend line, it's an upward sloping trend. Therefore, once we get past this, our markets have seen this before, we will rebound. We just have to be patient and understand that, um, that we'll, get, we'll get past this, okay? So the second uh, action is balanced. So if you look at the second slide, this slide shows the returns from year to year from different asset classes, so Canadian stocks, US stocks, bonds, etc. So what you can see is that from one year to the next, the winner one year was never the, the winner in all the future years, right? So if you take one of the blue ones, it was at the top one year and then at the bottom of the next. The point of this is to show you that it is almost impossible to always pick the winners, which are at the top, right? The numbers you see are the returns per year. So it's very, very difficult to pick the, the winners every year. So if you look at the middle part, the, the one that has that, the line flowing through it, that is a diversified portfolio, which is more or less balanced. You see that you'll never be at the top, 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 but you'll also never be at the bottom. So staying in the middle, being balanced in a balanced, diversified portfolio, will make sure that you're never too high and you're never too low. And the risk right now is being too safe or way too aggressive in the markets right now and having big drops. So if you're somewhere in the middle and being balanced, as the diagram shows, you will be okay and you will benefit from the rally uh, once it, once it uh, manifests itself. The third action is staying invested. So if you look at the graph um, that, that, that's up right now, so this is again a 20 year uh, trend of the TSX, so the Canadian stock market, just to show you that again, look at this from a graphical point of view. The top line is if again, you never missed any best day in the market, you just stayed invested through the highs and lows. Look at this, the second, the, the, the middle line and the bottom line are if you missed the 10 best days in 20 years and the 20 best days in 20 years. Look at the difference between the returns that you're leaving on the table. Now, of course, uh, in 2008, 2009, you see that the drop, everybody dropped. The key is if you stayed invested, you rallied back up rather quickly on the upward trend of those years after 2008, 2009. So you don't want to miss that ride up again whenever it presents itself, okay? No one knows when that will happen, but when it does, if you're still invested, you won't miss that rally. As fast as markets came down, they most likely will shoot back up when, um, when the economies are, are, are a little bit more stable, the virus is stable, and uh, in, individuals are ready to invest and have confidence to invest, okay? The last action is contribute monthly. Very, very important. So, in a down market, if you look at the graph that I posted, this is somebody who at the beginning of the year in January would have $12,000 lump sum to invest. In 2019, that person might have said, dump it all in and we're riding the wave up and we'll want to make money on the full 12,000, right? However, in a down market, the more prudent approach might be that you take that same $12,000, which is the line at the top. Instead, go to the line at the bottom, which is you start with $1,000 every month over 12 months. The official term for this is dollar cost averaging or contributing monthly. And the advantage of this is if you look all the way at the right, the person who invested monthly in a down market like we have now actually had more money than the person who invested the 12,000 lump sum, okay? Why? Because as the markets drop, you're buying on the cheap at a discount, okay? So the, the visual example I give to clients is, if you have a scalding hot bath, will you jump in it like the client who puts in the 12,000? No, you'll dip a toe, dip a foot, dip the other toe, dip the other foot. You'll gently ease your way into the bath. You'll gently ease your way into the market to make sure that you don't get burned along the way uh, like we are in right now because no one knows where the bottom of the market is. But if you buy slowly, even if you're wrong on a, a few of the contributions and then the market rallies, the rest of your money is being invested on the way up. Okay, so very, very important. Do not stop contributing. Make sure you're contributing monthly, bi-weekly, weekly, however you want to do it. Make sure you continue to do that because it'll pay off once we uh, see the greener pastures. Okay. So in terms of the results from, from all of this, looking at the fear and the psychology and the logic of investing in, in tough markets, I wanted to summarize the results uh, of this conversation. Uh, so the first point is we have to replace fear with logic. So. The fear comes from the points I mentioned before, and we must replace them with logic. Now, for most people that cannot do this, it's most likely gonna be because of liquidity, okay? A lot of times, it's clients that have issues with liquidity. 
So if in your month to month budget, you have issues with liquidity and you feel tight, it's most likely because there's something in your budget that is affecting you and not necessarily the, your, your portfolio uh, numbers that are, that are rising and falling. Remember, if your RSP drops by 10, 15, 20% in the short term, that doesn't really impact your month to month budget. So you have to separate those two things and make sure that you understand that the RSP and investments are for long term and that your liquidity in your account is essentially for your short term day to day life. Okay. So we have to replace fear with logic based on the actions that I mentioned before. So the key thing that I want to bring home is right now is the absolute worst time to sell and go cash. The only time you should sell and go cash is if you absolutely need the money, like I mentioned for liquidity, because you can't pay your bills, because you, you, you've lost your job, uh, because you lost some shifts at work, for example, whatever the case may be, that is the only time where it would make sense to sell part of your portfolio, go cash, and use some of that money to live. If you do not need the money in your portfolios, your RSP, your TFSA, this is the worst time because we're on the way down. If you sell, you're actually crystallizing or enacting or realizing losses. Right now, they're just losses on paper. When they come back up, those losses will become gains. But if you sell now, you're actually crystallizing those actual losses, okay? And then you're gonna be in cash. And then when is the right time to go back in the market? No one has a crystal ball. So do not do this. Keep buying monthly, as I mentioned before, and you will catch the wave on the way up. The third point is I need to stress patience. So we're often patient in our, in our lives with our spouses, with our kids, in our job. This is the time to be patient with our advisors, to be patient with the fund managers, to be patient with ourselves and allow the governments to step in with the stimulus and, and allow them to, to, to have that stimulus work its way through the economy, allow markets to feel comfortable uh, with, uh, with, with the risk and the, the cases coming down like they did in China, like they did in Korea. Once we have a little bit more of understanding of what's going on, markets will eventually start rallying over time. We don't know when that is, but it will happen based on the slide I showed you before that we've seen this before in history. So I really, really want to stress patience right now in the markets. Okay. And the last point that I want to mention is for me, the most important part, which is why I left it for the end. Focus on your why. Why did you start investing? Why did you open an RSP? Why did you open a tax-free savings account? Why did you open a registered education savings plan for your kids? The idea was to invest most likely for the mid to long term. So if that's the case, let me leave you with an example. If we have a barbecue scheduled for next June, when it'll be beautiful and sunny, but the weatherman announces it's going to snow next week, right? Will we cancel our barbecue in the summer? Of course not. So the point of that is, why would I let something that is short term, even though it's risky and scary, affect my plans in the long term? It doesn't make sense. It's fear-based, it's not logical. So if our why is most likely medium term and long term, we cannot let the short term risk, although it's painful, affect the rationale and the reason why we invested in the first place, which is the long term. This volatility, this risk in the market is an opportunity for managers to buy stocks that they love that are at a huge discount. Big, big names that you all know and love that are at a discount, which will help you in the next 12 to 18 months and along your path um, over time. So please focus on the why. Whenever you have fear, go back and ask yourself, why am I investing? Oh, that's right. It's because it's for the long term. So it doesn't matter what happens in the short term. Okay. So again, stay safe, stay patient. Um, I hope you all get through this. And if you have any questions, don't be shy to, to send me an email or in the comments. And as always, have a great day.